You know, there's nothing more comforting than a wonderful stew. And for this recipe, I'm using some lovely Simply Better beef. I'm gonna put smoked bacon and mushroom into this. And it's a very, very slow cooking, delicious melt in the mouth uh, dish. Lots of vegetables, lots of flavor. And it's a dish you can actually make ahead and you can freeze, which is great. So what I've started doing is just browning off my beef. So I wanna show you the beef. This is the Irish Angus. So this is it here, it's dice of, just use two packets of the Simply Better beef, so I have. This is from uh, Jennings and Ballon Robe. So it's diced, it's very, very lean. I'm just gonna show you the technique. A little bit of flour. And then we're just literally gonna toss this and then just start to fry this off. The smoked bacon is this smoky, whiskey smoky. We really like that, you know, at home, even with a fried egg, it's delicious. So just rapeseed oil. I've done it in batches and that's a clever way of doing it because if you do it all at once, the meat will stew and you don't want that. Now you can do this without the flour. So if you're gluten free, you can just literally seal off the beef and you can thicken it with a bit of corn flour. So it's totally up to you as you want. Uh, a little bit more oil. I'm gonna put some lovely rapeseed oil in the pan and then also in the pot. Give this a little mix just to completely coat just that nice big chunks of beef. So turn up the pan there, okay. Now that's gonna take just a minute or two. Into that actually, I'll put in my smoked bacon so we can start the cooking process for this here. The smoked bacon in this is beautiful. So I've just got maybe about four or five of the streaky rashers, literally cut them into little lardons. Lots of vegetables going in here, but three large carrots, one onion, couple of sticks of celery and some leeks. So you could brown off the meat, then do the vegetables. I'm just gonna show you a quicker way on a pan. So a nice big nonstick pan. And then we're just gonna give this, we're gonna get a little bit of color, not too much, not too worried about that, just starting the lovely cooking process going there. We're just gonna focus on our lovely beef now, so we are. So give that just a nice, just get it nice and hot. Garlic is gonna go into our vegetables or it can go in there. So I'll just put it into the pan. About three cloves of garlic, which I've just literally crushed. And that's gonna give beautiful flavor. Now there's one herb that works really, really well with this is lovely fresh thyme. So I'm going to pick a little bit of fresh thyme here and we're going to chop this. Very, very simple stew. So it is just something really comforting, you know, and this time of year, it's just perfect. So you can do this with some diced lamb, but that lovely, simply better, quality assured Irish beef is really hard to beat. So fresh thyme is a great herb to grow if you can. I love it, so I do. So just chop it nice and fine and that's gonna go into our vegetables. Just sprinkle it all over. Give that a shake. So again, I'm not looking to actually color the, the veg. I'm just looking to literally seal it. So I am. Now with the beef, we just wanna get a little bit more color in here. So we have our smoked bacon, keep it up nice and high. And that's why it's really important to do it in batches. That's really, really important. So out of the two packets, it'll take you about probably 10 minutes. Get a nice bit of color because the color is where you'll get the real beautiful flavor. Lots of root vegetables. So a couple of carrots, peel them, cut them nice and big. A uh, couple of sticks of celery, some leeks, onion and garlic and that's really all you need in that now we're going to put in the rest of our beef here and we're going to deglaze it first of all so this means a fancy name just some white wine or red wine just about half a glass and you see this is going to kind of scrape away all those lovely sediment and juices but that's going to cook out you know as we start the cooking process so just let that cook out there. Mm -hmm. Tomato puree, about a tablespoon of double concentrated tomato puree. That's gonna go in there. And then I'm gonna add in these beautiful San Marzano tomatoes. So they are the chopped tomatoes there. Big fan of them. If you're making any uh, pasta sauces, tomato soup, casseroles, it's beautiful. Lots of lovely flavor. Now you can put bay leaf, you can put a little bit of rosemary. I think thyme is definitely one of my favorite herbs. So that's more or less done. I don't want to cook them. I just want to seal them in. In goes the can of tomatoes. 
to there the chopped tomatoes the beautiful Italian tomatoes and then just stir this through here so there's a couple of key tips when you're doing this browning off the meat chopping the vegetables just sealing them off you can do them all together you know, or separately in the in the casserole pot but just to speed it up we uh, we've I've used a pan and then we also have the casserole pot there so just stir this through here now some stock I'm using some beef stock and just a cube is fine for this just gonna completely cover this lovely okay so that's about two pints of beef stock and this needs to come to the boil and then I like to finish this in the oven so I already have one done so the oven is preheated okay the fan oven if you look over there it's 140 fan oven so literally that comes to the boil lid goes on them into the oven and about two and a two two and a half hours and that really depends on the size of the nice chunks of meat it's going to cook really really fast here's a wee tip for you if you like obviously potatoes work really well i'm serving some mash with this but if you want to peel some potatoes cut them into quarters and put them in for the last 45 minutes so it's like everything's going into the one pan there's one thing that i have put into my casserole that i'm not putting into this yet but these lovely mushrooms so these are these chestnut mushrooms but they go in for the last 40 minutes so literally you cut them in in quarters put them in stalks and all go in there and they'll give great texture and flavor the smoked bacon the mushrooms the garlic all those lovely flavors and what i'm going to serve i'm going to take my one out now in a moment what i'm going to serve with this is some lovely mash so how I've made this mash here, everyone, is just literally by steaming some rooster potatoes, put them through my potato ricer, and then added in a little bit of milk, some butter, and a touch of cream. So it's lovely, lump-free, but lovely kind of soft, smooth mashed potato. Sometimes I like this just with some rice. Simple rice, just steamed or boiled, is really delicious. <coughs> now, I'm going to move this out of the way, okay? So we'll pretend we put that into the oven so I'll just use my tea towel it is hot and I want to take the one that I've been cooking now for the last it's been in there at least two and a half hours so we'll just put that there so remember that goes into the oven all right at 140 which is a fan oven so I'm going to take this one out so watch the fingers when you're doing this and I'll just lift the lid off and then I'll get a nice shot of that oh yeah how good does that look I'll pop this in now there we go there's really no need to stir it what I would do is maybe after an hour just give it a wee stir or something like that um, and then the last 45 minutes thereabouts put it don't forget the mushrooms that's if you like mushrooms so what you're looking for I want to show you with the beef in particular you're looking for that it's cooked through I'll switch that off so that it's not too thick and it's not kind of a uh, too runny that's really important now I put a bay leaf into that, so don't forget if you have a bay leaf. And then literally if you just come close, that should just melt in the mouth. See the way that just breaks apart. So it's lovely and soft. We're gonna finish this with some chopped parsley. Just using some curly parsley for this recipe. Bring it all together. And we'll just stir this through and then serve with the mash. That's switched off, everything's off. So just be really careful when you take it out of the oven. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be so tender. And if you don't want to use flour, it's at that stage you would thicken it with a little bit of diluted corn flour. So it's totally up to you. So that just goes in at the last moment. Stir that through. And this is the kind of recipe, like look at the nice chunks of carrot. So don't cut them too small. It's a recipe that will keep really well in your fridge and you can heat it the next day, you can freeze it. I love those kind of recipes. So I'm gonna serve it up. So we'll just put a little bit of mash, or rice as I say, just to the side. So just put that just there. And then just using a ladle, and you wanna get all those lovely juices and if you serve this with some nice bread too, it's beautiful. Now, so for me that lovely, simply better beef. So look at that lovely juices there. Just literally put that and the mushrooms. So if you cut them nice and big, the mushrooms will have kept their shape. They won't go too small, too mushy. And you can see, ah, oh, lovely. You can see that little bit of smoked bacon. 
I mean, we just love a stew like this. And this can be done in a slow cook cooker, I should have mentioned that. So you can get a lovely kind of slow cooker. It's sort of chapter in my new book, and you can certainly cook it. You know, that'll take four, four and a half, maybe five hours, depending on your setting. So that's our very, very simple. Um, it's a beef casserole with smoked bacon and some mushrooms served with some lovely mashed potato. I think that is the biggest hug in a bowl you'll ever get. It's comforting, it's delicious. The key is really good quality beef, browning off the beef for flavour, stock, vegetables. You could put barley into that, but I'm putting in some mushrooms and smoked bacon in time. So I hope you try this recipe. It's just lovely, you know, coming into the winter months. It's comfort, it's delicious, and it's full of flavour.